Hi everyone and welcome back to Understand the Bible. In this session we are thinking about Lord's Day 8 of the Heidelberg Catechism and in this session we are starting to think about the Trinity. Now I said that last time at the end of the last session we were thinking about uh, the Apostles' Creed and we're starting to look at that and next session I think we will dive into that and we'll be working our way through it slowly. But uh, we're just taking a moment to say Actually, now why is it important to think about the Trinity? Because that's what the Apostles' Creed uh, talks about. Now, a lot of Christians have difficulty, you know, they don't like uh, looking into the Trinity, not because they've looked into it, but because there's just a perception that it's hard and a perception that it's not really relevant to everyday life. And I just want to say, actually, that that couldn't be further from the truth. You know, that the Trinity is, yes, in a sense, Uh, understanding about God is uh, beyond our understanding but God has revealed these things to us and there are things which we can learn and understand and also it is deeply relevant for our lives as Christians as I hope that we will see as we go through this catechism together. So with that in mind there's two questions in the catechism today we won't be looking at loads of bible verses Um, but let's dive in this is question number 24. How are these articles divided? And remember, this is thinking about the Apostles' Creed. Into three parts, God the Father and our creation, God the Son and our deliverance, God the Holy Spirit and our sanctification. Now, the thing that strikes me immediately as I read that is that each kind of section, the three parts, it talks about God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. But each section is also linked with something which is of relevance for us Uh, living practically as Christians. So God the Father and our creation. Now our creation, it's really important to understand our creation to lead a Christian life because we need to understand who we are. We need to understand that God made us. We need to understand God as our creator. And you know that helps us to understand our purpose in life, what we're here for. So uh, important thing to understand here. Second thing is God the Son and our deliverance. Again, you know, massively important thing. We've been looking at this a little over the past few sessions about Jesus, our mediator, how he had to be fully God and fully man. But again, just thinking that, you know, this is something uh, which is not, you know, apart from uh, the Christian life, but which is intimately related to it. And in fact, a lot of the doctrine of the Trinity came into being because theologians were asking the question, who is Jesus? And that question, who is Jesus, is a deeply relevant one to you and I as we think about our salvation. And the final thing is the Holy Spirit and our sanctification. Now, sanctification is just a word which means becoming more holy. It just means, you know, doing what is right instead of what is wrong, growing into the way that God wants us to be rather than, um, you know, going our own way. And, uh, and all that sort of thing. So just you know, growing into the people who God made us to be. You could say that that was sanctification. And the Holy Spirit's the one uh, who helps us to do that. So you know, again, something which is deeply relevant to our lives as Christians. And all of it is kind of Trinity shaped. So that's why it's important to study and to think about the doctrine of the Trinity because it is deeply practical for us as Christians. So let's look at question number 25. Since there is but one God, why do you speak of three, Father, Son and Holy Spirit? Because that is how God has revealed himself in his word. These three distinct persons are one true eternal God. So the Bible is very clear that there is one God and it says that in many uh, places. Let me just read you one which is possibly the uh, the most famous and um, important of those, Genesis, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Now this is something which Jewish people, and I think some Orthodox Jews still do uh, do this every day. It, this is part of what they recite every day as a prayer. Now, the Lord is one Lord. Now, there is only one God. And that shows you how important this uh, this was and this is. And I think it's really significant to say, you know, there is only one God. There are not multiple gods. If you think about it for a moment, you think, actually, it wouldn't make sense, would it, for there to be more than one God? Because 
uh, if it was like, you know, for example, how the ancient Greeks saw their gods, you know, the gods sort of had fights sometimes. One of them could undo something that another one had done and they could be in different moods. You know, basically it was just a free for all. And, you know, if one, uh, one god does not have all the power, there are rival gods and that, you know, they're not really gods at all, are they? And that's the, the, the point that you know, if God has competitors, then he's not really God. And God pretty much by definition has to have all the power and, and everything. You know, nothing can stand in his way. Otherwise, he wouldn't be God. So that's why it's important for there to only be one God. So why, as the Catechism says uh, then, do we speak of three, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit? Well, it, it affirms that there there is one God, but these three persons are one true eternal God. And the reason that we speak of God in that way is because that's how God has revealed himself in his word. And like we've been looking at through the Catechism in the last few weeks, that it's important to look at God's word, you know, the Bible, how he has revealed himself to us, because that is how we listen to God. That's how we hear him speak to us. And so when we say God is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we are simply obeying how God has revealed himself to us in the Bible. So what we're going to do is just take a moment to look at a few Bible references, just uh, three Bible references here. You could spend a long time looking at this. And, and at the end, I will recommend a couple of books, actually, which go into this in more detail. But, you know, you could spend ages looking at all the Bible references and everything. We don't have time for all of that. But I'd just like to point out a few ways in which uh, the Trinity makes a difference to us. Doesn't just kind of, um, uh, isn't just an intellectual exercise, but is actually a, a faith exercise and makes a difference in the way that we live our lives. So the first reference is Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. And this is what we, um, I think we had this a few weeks ago as well. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Now, just think, what difference does the Trinity make to this verse? One of the things I learned at college was that the Trinity has, from eternity, been a community of other person-centred love. So God is a community of other person-centred love and always has been. What does that say then when we are made in God's image? when we are supposed to reflect something of God. I think that says something about how we should structure human society, you know, as a community of love, how we should structure the family and, and how we should be as people. You know, we exist in relationships and we exist to love. Uh, we exist to love others. So that's really fundamental. Uh, but uh, yet at the same time, it doesn't kind of override our status as individuals. You know, that the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit are all distinct, but they're all kind of one together. And likewise, you know, that our distinctiveness as individuals isn't um, kind of when we come together as community. Actually, it's our, you know, we bring our individuality to the community. And that is the wonder of of um, human society, isn't it? That it's not about overriding the individual but about us bringing our uniqueness to something greater. And, you know, we get that from the Trinity. And that's quite a, maybe a deep thought, but I think, I hope that it sort of perhaps sparks some thoughts off in your mind that actually, you know, that when we come together as a human society, we are seeking to, to bring our own individuality to something bigger for the, the you know, the greater kind of um, and bigger good of society. Uh, so that all comes from being made in God's image. The second reference is 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14, which is actually the last verse in the book of 2 Corinthians, one of Paul's letters. And this is what it says. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So uh, Paul this is giving a blessing. And he talks about the love of God, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And it's a, a lovely blessing and it's called the grace. And we often say this together in church. But you see how it is Trinitarian shaped, you know, it talks about the Father, the Son and, and the Holy Spirit. And, you know, I think 
in order for us to experience and enjoy these blessings, we need to understand about the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. You know, to grow into these kind of blessings, it is a blessing to understand the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, you know, the grace and love and fellowship uh, of them. And, you know, when we do that, we actually grow in blessing. So that's just what I wanted to say really from this, that to understand more about God and more about the Trinity is to uh, receive a blessing. Uh, and the final uh, reference that I wanted to, to mention today was from John's Gospel, John chapter 15 and verse 26. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. So Jesus talks a lot about um, the Holy Spirit in, in John's Gospel in particular. And John is actually um, talks an awful lot about the Trinity. If you want to understand the Trinity better, then John's Gospel is a really good book to kind of study. But uh, Jesus, in this last kind of uh, the later part of the Gospel in particular, he talks about uh, an advocate or sometimes translated a comforter. And it just, you know, what Jesus is saying to his disciples is when he leaves, you know, when he, when he uh, leaves, then he's going to send a comforter. So you know, Jesus is saying, I'm physically present with you now, but when I go, and you know, when I die, arise and, and ascend to heaven, I will send you someone who will help you. And that uh, we know is the Holy Spirit. That's what, what Jesus did when he ascended into heaven. He sent the Holy Spirit uh, to us. And the Holy Spirit helps us. He helps us to learn about Jesus. He helps us to live a Christian life. He helps us to grow in, in holiness, what we call um, sanctification. You know, so the Holy Spirit kind of makes these things that we know about God real to us in the here and now. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. So, you know, we don't just know about the Trinity, but we experience the Trinity in our lives as we live a Christian life. That's why it's important to study the Trinity. And I hope that this is, again, just giving you a reason to keep on saying, well, actually, I want to find out more because there is a lot more to find out. And if just um, before we close, if you would like to do some reading on the Trinity, then there are a couple of books I can recommend. I mean, there are a lot of good books uh, about the Trinity, a lot of good sort of introductions. I'm just going to recommend two, but there are probably others which are equally good. The first one is called Delighting in the Trinity by Tim Chester. And this is um, a really good book, um, very readable um, and very kind of, you know, it's not, it explains um, things in quite simple language. And I think it's a really good book as to why the Trinity, it says, you know, just why a Father, Son and Spirit, such good news. You know, it's actually, it's not just an academic thing, but it's talking about why the Trinity matters for us as Christians in the way that we live our lives in the Christian life. So that's number one that I would recommend. And the second book is uh, The Good God by Mike Reeves. And this, again, is a pretty short. In fact, this one is only just over 100 pages. It's pretty, pretty lightweight. Um, but it's not lightweight in its content. And it, you know, it's humorous. It's written well, uh, easy to understand language, easy to read. And uh, it will help you to begin to understand the Trinity, I think. Uh, and you could do a lot worse than read these two books to help you understand about the Trinity. So I can definitely recommend both of those. Well let's take a moment to pray now as we come to a close. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for revealing these things to us in your word. We pray that you would help us to understand them more and not just to understand them but to love you more and to understand you more truly as we go about our lives, living our lives as Christians. So please help us now to grasp these truths and change us we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. So thank you very much for joining us for this uh, Lord's Day 8 of the Catechism. In the next few sessions, we're going to be moving on to the Apostles' Creed, thinking about what Christians have believed for uh, hundreds of years and thinking about why it's important for us. So I hope that you've enjoyed this session and I look forward to seeing you again for the next one very soon. Until then, God bless.